Hi, it's Ed from EHCC on behalf of TEC. And our topic today is measuring our pressure drop across an indoor coil. And then we can use that to estimate airflow. The equipment that's needed in order to perform this test is, is not much. We need a magnetic gauge or a digital manometer, whichever you prefer. Uh, it's not a test that requires a real precision instrument, and any of these will, will do the trick for us. Uh, we definitely need a static tip and a hose. Two is preferable. Uh, one is more than adequate, and we need some way to drill into the equipment. Got to be real careful when we're doing that. The process overview is giving us some guidance. It's first telling us we need the chart for the evaporator coil. This measurement by itself is useless without something to compare it to. So what we're gonna compare it to is the pressure drop chart from the original equipment manufacturer. We wanna make sure it's clean. If it is dirty, it will not match the numbers that were published by the OEM. Got to drill those holes. Be careful. Don't drill into something that is going to make you regret where you drilled into it. Take your readings. The readings are done by putting one of your static tips in the outlet side of our coil, one on the inlet side. You notice on this magnahelic gauge, we're seeing the hoses are crisscrossing. On a magnahelic gauge, the higher port has to go to the area of higher pressure. The lower port has to go to the area of lower pressure and the pressure is going to be lower at the outlet hence we're measuring a pressure drop we're going to compare that to the chart that's been provided by the manufacturer in this case right here this was the coil that we are doing the test on it has a pressure drop of 0.2 and our airflow is 880 it is very straightforward that's how you do it pros of using pressure drop across an indoor coil. Well, it's cost effective, the tools we probably already have, and it's fairly simple to do. The cons, you might not have access to that blower table, and if you don't have that, there's no point in doing this test. It's not accurate if things aren't clean. We start to get into some other maybes and ifs. Uh, one of my favorites down here is how wet is wet but let's just leave it for now as it's a con and with it being a con, it turns into this is a way to estimate airflow, not to measure airflow. And when we talk about estimating, it's simply not as accurate as measuring airflow. And it does have enough margin of error that the agencies that are gonna grade our new installations such as ANSIAC and ResNet do not recognize this methodology as a way to measure airflow. So with that, I'm going to pass off to Bill Spone from True Tech Tools, and Bill is going to go over some quick tips and some options for tools that you might be interested in. With that, take care. Appreciate that handoff, Ed. I'm giving a few tips here for my, my kind of library of solutions on pressure drop across an indoor coil. Again, you want to make sure you get the OEM information, the model number, and use the OEM table specifically for that equipment that, you're, that you'll be testing. And OEM means e original equipment manufacturer. And if you really think about tearing apart those words, the original equipment manufacturer developed the table using specific parts to get the pressure reaction to the airflow moving through those parts, the restrictions. And only if you kind of reverse that application are you going to be able to get any kind of decent reading with that. You also want to be careful about drilling the ports, being careful to avoid damaging any of the equipment. If you have no table, this method really isn't going to work. So you want to do your table, uh, your homework on the table and the equipment and the tools that you use and being careful about where you're drilling. These are some important points here. Now, speaking of equipment, there's different options and considerations. Anything from smart probes like the Testo 510i, which is a good general performance pressure gauge. Uh, it can be, it's a good uh, cost-effective solution for doing these static pressure type measurements as well as ESP measurements. Uh, but you can't really use it too much for outside of those applications for those pressure ranges and resolutions. 
the Field Peace SDM N6, similar type of product, um, but it also has a display on it. It does give you Delta P on the same screen, and it can also do this particular model does furnish pressure testers, testing switch op, um, options. You can you want to really remember what kind of range you're making your measurement in, and most of the uh, equipment on the market does come with the ability to switch from uh, from five to eight different common units of measurement. You do pay for versatility and performance as we take a step up here to like the TSA AP800. AP800 has a great high resolution manometer with a Bluetooth um, connection to an app as well as an onboard display. You can also do data logging with this device. You have other products that can be used for external static pressure measurement or this coil type measurement from UEI, Fieldpiece, uh, their smart probes that do Bluetooth. Uh, you also take, want to take a close look and see if you're going to be using anything with a temperature variation where the temperature compensation will become uh, important. There's also straight static pressure tips that can be used. Uh, and you can also use your blower door or duct leakage tester manometer. Uh, they have appropriate ranges, um, similar to something like the TEC DG8, which is a nice uh, single channel, highly accurate and stable, um, always kind of auto zeroing manometer. Uh, it does more, it's a little bit more expensive, but it does more and you always pay for more of the performance that you get out of these products. Um, there's some good steps in the TEC TrueFlow app to guide you through different pressure measurements, as well as being put on the, in the Measure Quick application. Look for it there. It's on their roadmap to integrate it in there. So you can use this uh, DGA for a lot of different readings outside of just coil measurements, uh, most building pressure measurements, including room pressures and zonal pressures, combustion air zone pressures. I want to thank you for listening to us here, to Steve and Bill, who put in a lot of effort from TEC and Ed, uh, myself, and we really want to try to, uh, we're doing this uh, to, to, to help you learn more about how to do better airflow testing. Uh, it's been a big uh, mystery out there. I've been training on it for over a decade. Uh, I keep learning more every day and uh, love, love to share it and collaborate with individuals like these folks uh, to put something together like this and to, for tech to house it all, to make it a resource and to be working on products that really address things uh, to bring you better measurements at better prices year after year. So I wanna thank you for listening to this and this uh, session on pressure drop across indoor coil. Hope you're looking at the other videos in the series and the other resources that are provided on the TEC HVAC airflow resource page. Thanks a lot and take care.